Welcome back to the Hockey Shop, source for sports. I'm here with Cam Matwiv. We're out in beautiful Surrey, British Columbia. More particularly, we're down here at the lower level of Hockey Shop, um, as I like to call it, Goalie Utopia. We used to call it Goalie Heaven. Had a friendly listener uh, of the Ingo Radio podcast remind us there is an actual store called Goalie Heaven in Toronto. Um, I would prefer not to go to Toronto where, whenever possible. So we changed the name to Goalie Utopia. All the whole, the whole thing about having to die to go to heaven, whereas Utopia is always here. And seriously, folks, like take a look around behind us. Like even in the backdrop, you're, like I guess on the podcast they can't really take a look, but just you listen, visualize, visualize. listen to the you, you, pretend. Listen to, you, listen to the goalie. Pack. Listen to the goalie gear. It is all around. It whispers at you. Sweet nothings. Try me on. Gra- That's my beer league team. That's not the Pats. <laughs> Grab a glove off the wall. Play with it. Make sure the cam has to then put it back afterwards. Do all these things. That sounds about right. <laughs> Anyways, we're back here in Goalie Utopia with Cam Matwiv and what did you call this? Two guys in chesties. Two guys in chesties. Today we are wearing the Warrior chest protector cams in the RG5 Pro. Uh, I am in the, Cam, you got to tell me here, RG5 Pro Plus. Plus. Yes. The difference between the Plus and the Pro. Walk, I can feel it. You walk me through what the differences are between these two lines. You can visually see it, too, for those of us that are watching. But that said, I opted for a little bit more traditional today. So that's basically uh, our major differences right off the bat. It's the elbows. More than just the elbows, the entire arm construction itself in particular. Um, Starting with the G5 Pro in particular, um, Warrior wanted to have uh, still a little bit more of a traditional unit, um, but still at that elite level of protection. So, you know, your average customer coming in that looks at a mechanical arm and still says, what is that? You know, don't worry, we still have you covered. Um, G5 this year, as opposed to G4 uh, from previous years, and even the RGT2, uh, without getting things too mixed up, this has gone for a little bit more tapered in the shoulder area in particular. Actually, a little bit of a smaller arm floater in particular, just to increase the mobility of the chest but not sacrifice really too, too much coverage. So just kind of rounding off the shoulders again, making that uh, ease of look and mobility, especially when you're know, backing out of the driveway kind of thing, they still want to be able to turn your head. Um, protection level of this unit is fantastic. They are still integrating um, their actual um, uh, composite material um, in particular. Their hypercomp um, is still actually overlayered um, underneath the actual uh, air knit of the chest in particular. Okay, and so for those of us here in the Ingle Radio Podcast, we haven't had a lot, uh, and at inglemag.com, we haven't had a lot of Warrior reviews, long story, but walk us through what that material is. Just a quick overview of what it is and how it works on very, the unit. Very similar to some of the other composite, our carbon composites we're seeing from other companies, like we'll call it Bauer in particular with their Curve. Curve, also. right. Yes, um, very similar properties, very strong uh, carbon fiber, offering a great deal of protection but allowing us to reduce the weight overall of the chest. So it helps make it lighter, and when it, it cut, when the puck contacts it, it sort of disperses that impact ra- rather than that's passing it through. That's correct. And so that's it. On the, on the Pro unit, the RG5 Pro, again, the traditional arms, that's located in the actual forearm and bicep? Actually, it's located all throughout the chest. So it's not just the arms they've added it to. It, right down to the body plate, shoulder floater, sternum plate, um, all throughout the arms in particular. It's a very armored up unit while still offering a great deal of flex. I noticed, in, again, you talked about a traditional elbow floater on this one versus the one I'm wearing. That's, the again, the Pro Plus, which has the mechanical arms that Warrior sort of became famous for with their original ritual line. But even on your traditional elbow folders, you said... The floater's a little bit smaller, but in terms of protection, there's multiple layers there underneath that initial layer. And um, it just seems like that's probably going to help you with mobility and absorb a little more impact and probably help you eat a few more pucks in there. Yes, that's correct. The additional segmentation that they've offered to it, uh, again, creating a little bit more of that gap from where the actual impact is to where you know, you're know you actually wearing the chest in particular. The more gap I can create there, the greater level of absorption, but also protection level is increased as well with that. Okay. What about the, before we move on to the one I'm wearing, the RG5 Pro Plus, what are some of the other features that, feedback that you've heard from goalies that are testing this unit, what do they like the most about it? So those that are familiar with Warrior chest in particular, and even if you're not, the adjustment level of these chests is always very, very high. Basically anything on this chest is attached by a piece of Velcro that allows you to move it and dial it in to where you would need. The shoulder photos, sternum plate, obviously your back plate, two body adjustments to bring it up and down to control your neckline. Great adjustments for actually where the Velcro sits on the body of the chest in particular. No explosive clips here, so we're not going to break anything. 
Um, so the clips are actually, I noticed there's two layers around the, the ribs and the clips actually there's sit no in clips between. There, it's just Velcro. Just straight Velcro. Yes, okay. that's correct. So um, again, also body extenders too to help you dial in that fit, whether or not you tuck or don't tuck. Um, and this is going to integrate with your pants either way. So, uh, and a couple little loops there underneath in terms of integrating in with the belt. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, another opportunity for you to tie down your chest just in a bit of a different fashion. So belly loops. Yes. I like belly loops. <laughs> then one more time. No. No. <laughs> no. No belly loops. Let's move on to the RG5 Pro Plus. Now this is again, this is the key difference here is going to be the arms, like you said, from the wrists all the way up to the shoulders. Uh, walk me through the evolution. We haven't been in this here at Ingle since we tested the original version. I would argue that's still a standard bearer review in terms of that first look at something that was really bold and innovative, the mechanical arms that Warriors introduced. How have they evolved over the years and what's different in this unit compared to past? Yeah, I mean, now they've had a chance to refine it uh, by quite a bit. Uh, like commonly referred to as the Robocop arms in particular. Um, I would say a little bit unfairly tagged because as you found out, even with you putting them on, you have very supreme mobility with it. Where's my coffee? Oh, I lost my coffee or I'd have a sip. It's all right. He's still able to scratch his nose, which is just as close to being able to take that sip of that coffee. It's a little itchy too. Great mobility with these, but also a supreme level of protection. Um, you have that hypercot material throughout the bicep and the forearm. Um, again, this time there's nothing covering it. You can see it out and exposed. You can hear it right off the bat, but there's a great gap in between of where your actual arm sits in the chest comparative to the actual floater and uh, itself on you in particular. Yeah, you can, you can feel that when you put it on, you can feel where the, the pieces that sort of create that, gra that gap are. It's a little bit different from what I remember of the original ritual in terms of how they create the gap. Mm -hmm. But I do remember that gap being very important because it, again, allows for impact absorption. You're not gonna feel those pucks as much. And this is one that I thought was probably an unfair tag when you mentioned the Robocop right out of the gate. I mean, we took it out and tested it with some high-end goalies, uh, some guys who were playing at UBC that went on to play pro uh, overseas. And they were surprised at just how good this thing was at eating pucks, like in terms of controlling rebounds and absorbing pucks. I think when you think of mechanical, you think of blocky, and this doesn't necessarily have to, it may not be quite as sort of fluid as the traditional RG5 Pro that you're wearing, mm -hmm. um, but there's still a great range of motion. You're still able to be reactive in this. And then your other bonus of the, of the squared off mechanical arms is anything that hits them is deflected and off into the corner. There's no chance of a puck hitting this, rolling over and ending up in the net. Exactly, like the squareness of them actually sealing up against your body is one of the biggest you know, benefits and features of the chest in particular. You know, really gonna help to trap those body shots coming into the sides, allow for an ease of seal. Other than that, the actual two bodies of the chest themselves are very, very similar in particular. Um, again, the arms being the biggest call out between the two. You're not going to have any change in level of protection or quality between the two in terms of for the body. Again, it's the arms that are the major call out is the difference. I can flex really well in this. It's looking great. Oh, there's a great range of motion in this. The other thing that uh, that original unit was, uh, the, the body was a little smaller. Yes. Um, and to the point where I remember talking to guys in the National Hockey League at, that, that it actually tested it, really loved the arms. But again, where every inch of presentation counts, they felt the body, you know, was a disadvantage. It was smaller enough. And so guys had actually talked, I remember talking to Chris Mason at the time, how much he loved the arms and was thinking about putting it on a different chest. Now that they've made the presentation, again, like you said, the chest unit itself is similar to the RG5 Pro, they made it nice and big. You don't have, like you're not presenting any smaller in this because of the arms, the way no. you did maybe way back in that first iteration. Those that are familiar with the, like the G4 will notice again, the difference in the shoulder floaters, having them a little bit rounder. So that's keying up on the trend that we, we have seen with chest recently. But one of the major differences, is the addition of these two hard elbow caps, or not elbow caps, sorry, shoulder caps, in particular that weren't featured on that uh, that older unit really helped to expand the overall size presentation profile of, of it is quite a bit That's bigger correct. and the one thing that we did love on that first unit the challenge we always said was going to be making it bigger and present bigger without losing the ability to sort of move your mask around this thing yeah. um, and the way that these shoulder floaters are, are snug to the body 
Um, like there is a great range of motion. Again, I don't have a mask on right now. I know Warrior Now offers a mask and we can talk about that in a future edition of the podcast. Um, but you can just tell there's not going to be much interference in terms of getting into your stance, getting set and being able to sort of track into pucks and have it worrying about your, your mask sort of hitting your chest and arms. So, um, great job by Warrior. Cam, thank you for walking us through the two models. Uh, you can find out more information online. Check them out at the hockey shop, source of sports, the shop.com. Where can they get a hold of you if they've got questions? Which models for me? Should I be in the RG5 Pro? Should I be in the RG5 Pro Plus? How is it going to integrate great with my pants? How's it going to fit? Arm length? All those questions. Where do they get a hold of you and your crew, Cam? They can give us a call at 604-589-8299. Notice how he like totally, not only does he, like for those that are going to get to see this on video, because add a bonus as you're listening to this on the podcast, we are recording this. So we're going to have some some more active reviews up online in terms of being able to watch it too. What you will note when you get to watch the video is that Cam not only goes into radio voice, he goes into radio eyes. Like it's like he's trying to, oh, I don't know what he's trying to do to the camera, but he's having a good time over here with the radio voice. So Cam, thank you very much. I, I look forward to sharing the video portion with people later on, but for now it's on the In Goal Radio podcast. And as always, we appreciate you taking the time down here in Goal Utopia uh, to film this segment with us. Yes, thanks Cam. And we can we're test the range of motion of the Warrior RG5 Pro Plus by taking pucks and hitting cam square in the RG5 Pro. Now, we have hit him in the nuts once and he wasn't wearing a can. Here we are three weeks later, so he's actually brave enough to do this without adding a can. You'll also notice that here we are three weeks later and he's still wearing the same set of pants. I hope you put them in the wash between filming. Can you give him let him raise himself or can you just chuck him? Oh, yeah. My aim's a little off because of the chest. Also because I can't throw. 